A major new ITV drama called Mr Bates versus the Post Office began last night. In fact, you can watch all uh, episodes, I think, right now on ITVX. It tells the story of the biggest miscarriage of justice in British legal history. That was the prosecution by the Post Office of hundreds of innocent sub-postmasters for fraud, sorry, fraud and theft, crimes that they did not commit. The computer system Post Office spent an arm and a leg on is faulty. No one else has ever reported any problems with Horizon. No one. You're responsible for the loss. I haven't got that money and I don't know where it's gone. These deficits were most likely caused by you. That is the Post Office case. All our hopes, all our savings down the pan. That was a lie, actually. We are fighting a war against an enemy owned by the British government. While we're just skint little people. Well, James Hartley of Freeth Solicitors is the lawyer who helped gather together 555 of the sub postmaster victims of this scandal. James, morning. Morning, morning. Um, obviously, Alan Bates is at the centre of the story, played brilliantly by Toby Jones in, in this drama, and he was the one who really helped bring together um, all the people who'd been victims of this right at the start. So tell us when you became involved and how you became involved. So 2015 was when we uh, first got involved. So I heard it was the Today programme on uh, BBC Radio 4 and James Arbuthnot, one of the MPs who had been campaigning along with Alan for many years, was doing a piece about the outrage um, that was beginning to emerge. Um, So I made contact with Alan and said to Alan that the f- many red flags were starting to, to to emerge for me even on even on the small amount that I knew about the story so we met up and we started to uh, try and build the case and build a number of so postmasters that we knew we would need to establish and f- and build a group action or class action yeah and you say build together a case it, it's a huge effort isn't it actually to get all those people on board how challenging was that yeah, very. I mean, there were a few few big challenges. I mean, what what we do in these situations is we sort of model model the situation and, and look at where we think we can take it. And what became clear to us, and we said to Alan that first of all, given the track record of post office denying um, for years and years and years that there was anything wrong with the computer system, we knew they'd fight the case, and indeed they did fight the case, and it cost millions and millions. Of pounds, so we needed the evidence to get litigation funding. The problem with the evidential side of it was that one of the things that post office did, and this comes out from the drama actually, was that they tended to suspend or terminate postmasters, lock them out of the branch, and hold on to and confiscate all the documents. So post office had a lot had a lot of the evidence. Um, so we needed funding. We needed a team of experts. Uh, we needed the evidence and we needed a larger number of postmasters, which is eventually how we, we managed to, to build a sufficiently large group to actually pursue the, the claim. And, and you have been successful, although you look at the, the numbers here still involved in this. It is astonishing. Something like 2,500 sub-postmasters in total have applied for compensation from the post office. Um I think just over 770 have received compensation so far. Post Office says they've offered um, more than 130 million. Um, But I don't know of that how many have actually been paid out and agreed on. No, and and it's it's a very slow process and too slow um, for of the thousands actually of affected postmasters, I, I think it's more in the region of 3,000 postmasters that are in the process of obtaining compensation. Um, but that is one of the other things that will no doubt outrage people. For, first of all, um, you know, people's blood will be boiling having watched the first ITV episode, blood boiling in terms of what's happened to these postmasters' lives ruined. The other aspect, unfortunately, is how much this has all cost. So, um, some estimates are in the region of over a billion pounds of public money this whole scandal will have cost. Now and that, that's what, in, in the post office legal fees, is it? Or, or no, what? it's combination. So it is, it's post office being government owned would, is no, not able to sort all this out financially. It doesn't have the money. So government has, has quite rightly stepped in. It's done the right thing. But that's a combination of legal fees that, you know, uh, 
tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of pounds incurred by post office on legal fees, but also compensation as well, all of which could have been avoided had post office done the right thing back right in at the start. 2000. And, yeah, right at the start, all of this could could have been avoided. So, so that's the, the other level of outrage about this whole, this whole situation. What about the providers of the Horizon system, Fujitsu? Were they never liable for any of this? Well, they, they had the contract with post office and there will no doubt have been um, a lot of dialogue between Fujitsu and Post Office over the years about whose fault it is and who knew what. This will be one of the other things that will come out of the public inquiry that's ongoing. So during the course of this year, maybe into next year, uh, a whole raft of findings on over 200 issues and questions will come out from the public inquiry, which will get to the bottom of what happened, who knew what, whether that's Post Office or or Fujitsu, or, or indeed... Uh, senior people within each of those organisations who knew what and um, that may well be or probably will be a foundation for decisions being taken as to accountability. You know, mm-hmm. Will hands roll, will there be prosecutions, uh, for example, for perverting the course of justice uh, mm-hmm. by one or both of those organisations or people within them? Yeah, um, still a long way to run on this one and, and lives have been destroyed, lives have been lost in the process, but but you hope that ultimately um, the people who, who've suffered through all of this will will get some kind of um, compensation. What, what did you think just finally of the, the drama itself? Because it's not always easy to get these things right when it's based on, on real life events. Yeah, absolutely brilliantly done because it's a highly complex uh, situation that goes back many, many years. So Gwyn Hughes, the writer... Did a fabulous job. We worked very closely with Gwyn, as did Alan Bates and, and many others. Um, the acting's brilliant. Uh, to- Toby Jones um, playing Alan. Yeah, I-, I know Alan very well. I've been working with him over the years, and, and Toby absolutely nails it, frankly, in terms of playing Alan. The actor playing me, John Hollingworth, uh, <laughs> I got to know John very well as well, so that's been a fascinating process seeing how how that all works and, and he's marginally younger than me and better looking than me so that's a bonus as well <laughs> nice thank you very much for talking to us james hartley i know your work continues he's um from free solicitors a lawyer involved in trying to get compensation for all those sub postmasters now the post office say we're deeply sorry doing all we can to right the wrongs of the past as far as that is possible offers of compensation totaling more than 130 million have been made to date They say the vast majority of which have been agreed and paid. We're continuing to make interim payments in other cases. We fully share the aims of the current public inquiry set up to establish what went wrong in the past and the accountability for it. And you can see it, um, as I say, on ITV1, I think continues tonight and over the next couple of days. We'll watch it all right now on ITVX. It's 7.54.